I just took my first ever trip to Busch Gardens, Tampa Bay. I got a chance to ride every single coaster there, and so today I'll be counting down all nine coasters at the park. Number nine, Air Grover. This ride is just a basic kitty coaster, nothing special. Number eight, Scorpion. This ride really isn't bad, but it doesn't do anything special. The loop is fun, but the rest of the ride is kind of janky. I'm not the biggest fan of all the helixes, and it's also just really short. But this is still a great coaster for families and for people getting into coasters. Number seven, Cobra's Curse. You start off this ride with one of the most unique and fun elements, which is a lift hill, but it brings you up a 70 foot tall elevator lift. If you are not expecting this lift, then it can really catch you off guard, which is really fun. The rest of the layout is twisty and at one point even turns you backwards. Once you go backwards, you start spinning, but luckily it's not an out of control spin. Number six, Tigris. This ride has so much potential, but it just isn't that good. The ride is great, don't get me wrong, but what ruins it is the restraints. The comfort collars are extremely uncomfortable and the launch caused an uncomfortable rattle. Overall, this coaster has a lot of potential, but it needs to fix some things before it can be any higher. Number five, Shikra. This is the spot where the coasters go from mid to world class. Some people debate whether Shikra or Valraven is better, but after riding both, I can confidently say Shikra is a thousand times better. Better. The drop seems so much steeper, the elements feel so much more intense, and it's just way more overall fun. And unlike Valraven, the drop off the mid course gave another stomach dropping feeling. Like seriously, after riding this, Valraven is just worse in every category. The water splashdown is a great additional feature, and then when it ends, unlike Valraven, it doesn't feel like it's missing an element or two, which is really good because the length feels perfect. Number four, Kumba. I unfortunately only got one ride on this coaster. Well, one and a half, depending on how you look at it. I actually got evac'd off this ride while I was on it, which for me was definitely a first. And then they sent us out and gave us a free skip the line pass that we could use on any other coaster of our choice. But on my full ride, I had row two far right side as my seat. There was a rattle, which I think is because I was on an outside seat. I found the zero G roll to be my favorite element of the ride. However, I found it to be way overhyped. People debate whether this or Hulk is better, but Hulk wins for me for sure. Maybe if I ever go back and I get a way better ride on it, it may change, but from what I experienced on that one ride, this definitely comes runner up. It was sort of secluded from all the other rides and took a bit of walking to get to, but depending on how you look at it, that is a plus because it kept the weight lines really short. It's definitely a very cool looking coaster, especially the double corkscrew. I got a pretty good photo of it after getting evac'd while they were testing it, and I'll put it on screen here. Number three, Cheetah Hunt. Kids coaster, debatable, but I say yes. This really is the perfect theme for the coaster. You launch at 60 miles an hour to match the speed and acceleration of a real cheetah. The rest of the ride, you are surrounded in a very cool environment, making high speed turns and jumping back and forth. It has an extremely long layout and multiple launches. It's an extremely complete coaster. Launch, check. Inversion, check. Drop, check. Long layout, check. Like Kumba, this ride is another great looking coaster. It is immersive in its environment and it has such a low height requirement that everyone can ride it. Number two, Montu. I got a back row ride on this and like Shigra, it crushes Cedar Point's version of this ride in Raptor. It's not all jumbled up, which I like, and it does not let up. It's that intense. I found no rattle at all when I rode it, but I don't know if that's just it having a good day or something. The inversion out of the trench really got me off guard. And speaking of the trenches, those were a great addition to the ride, along with the Egyptian theme. The thing about this ride that really sets it apart is its pacing. It's paced so well that you're blazing through the layout the whole time, and there's no random element just thrown in there at the end. Overall, in my opinion, this is definitely one of the best, if not the best, B&M ever out there. Number one, Iron Gwazi. My new number one coaster. It's not too long or too short. It's so fast paced that you can't even breathe until it's over. You thought Steel Vengeance was good? Well, you've never been on this. It is the best night ride I've ever been on and I got the last ride of the night on this thing in the back row. Speaking of night, that's when this coaster really stands out. It has an exceptional lighting package as well as all of those elements in the dark. Like imagine the death roll, but you can't see anything. It's insane. It makes the whole trip to Busch Gardens Tampa worth it. I also picked this to be my 75th roller coaster credit, and it did not disappoint. This ride really is just that good. 
Well, that was my ranking of all the coasters at Busch Gardens Tampa. Comment below your rankings of all the coasters. And even if you haven't been to the park, you can definitely still do that based off how much you think you would like them. Well, that'll do it for this video. If you liked what you saw, be sure to check out some of my other videos. That'll do it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.